Hello, sewing people of the internet. Remember me? Uh, so I kind of took a step away from uh, sewing and also making videos about sewing. Uh, kind of makes sense. Uh, for a couple of months. Um, and this video is kind of about um, what distracted me from sewing and what got me back into sewing. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this particular project. This is not a tutorial uh, on how I made this. I don't know how many people out there want to make uh, exactly this pack for exactly this purpose, but this is more of a why to or a sew and tell um, and more of a discussion about how sometimes it's good to step away from something you're passionate about and more importantly for me, I think, uh, is sometimes it's okay to compromise in the interest of getting something done and just doing stuff. I'm a big fan of the saying, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And this bag is not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Um, you know, when I look at some of the details, there's some wrinkles in the seams and stuff that I don't love. There's things that make this obviously not a professionally made, you know, high-end bag. Most people probably wouldn't notice these things, but those of us who do this, you know, probably would. So, um, anyway, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the bag. If you don't like videos of people talking, then this is not the video for you. Um, in fact, this might not be the channel for you. But, anyway, that's what we're here for. So, here we go. So, I guess before we get into this, this bag is for fishing. It's a sling bag uh, that I wear while I'm fishing. And a lot of the fishing I do um, involves walking, sometimes pretty far on uh, canal banks and stuff in southwest Florida. So I wanted something that I could carry. The things I need, I was using a big backpack that was way too big and uncomfortable, and this has worked out great. But uh, before I get into that, I want to talk about what happened that made me step away for a little bit, because it's kind of a twofold thing. Uh, one was just purely a lack of motivation. I've been sewing as my primary hobby and really kind of my identity. Like most people who know me know that I sew above all the other things that I do that you know most people know that I sew if they don't know that I'm a runner or a fisherman or whatever. And 10 years of that is a lot. And I think uh, just on a random day, two or three months ago, a switch flipped and I didn't want to sew anymore. And uh, I, I was pretty sure it wasn't permanent, but uh, I did need to just not think about or do sewing for a little while. I'm only sharing this with you because I can't be the only person this has ever happened to or it ever will happen to, and it's okay. Like, I'm back. I still remember how to thread a sewing machine and how to use it, and uh, if anything, it might be a boost to my motivation to have had that break away from it. So uh, the other thing that is maybe the more positive part is, um, so I, my day job is managing a commercial property, the property that I'm standing in right now. Part of my responsibility is maintaining things and um, seeing to the public restrooms here, uh, keeping them clean and stuff. And um, this summer I had a project to uh, do uh, a refresh of those restrooms, paint them, change some fixtures, make them a little bit nicer. And I was given free reign to do whatever I wanted. So uh, I'll cut in some pictures, but I decided to attempt a, a portrait of uh, my cat Bobbin, who some of you know. Um, and I was extremely surprised how well it turned out. Uh, I don't, I have not considered myself to be an artist. Uh, I've always been artistic, I guess. Um, but this is the first time trying anything of this scale and attempting to be, you know, somewhat realistic in the interpretation. And it turned out so great, and I'm so happy with it, that it actually spurred a motivation to experiment with more and more art. So I've been doing a lot of drawing and painting recently. Um, I don't see that replacing sewing as the number one thing that I'm known for ever, but it has been something I've been enjoying. I'll cut in uh, some footage of some of the pieces I've been working on. Definitely intend to do more of that but not replace sewing with it. Just an, another thing that I enjoy doing. So, and I've, some of you who've been around here for a long time know that, uh, where's my bag? Some of you who have been around for a while know that I have used pieces of art that I made, like this is a, a print from a Dutch pour. Uh, you can just Google that if you don't know what it is. 
uh, it's a paint method. And so I made the painting and then I had it printed by Ripstop by the roll onto some VX21, I think, and I made a few things out of it. Um, so that's really fun. And I imagine I'll probably be doing more of that going forward. So uh, that was part of why I wasn't sewing. And I had a big piece I was working on. I finished that piece and coincidentally, it was time to get back onto this bag. So let's talk about this bag. Um, I started this several months ago and had a, a idea of how I wanted it to turn out and it's like 95% of what I wanted. One thing I neglected to do, frankly, because I forgot about it in those couple of months that I stopped sewing, I had this bag probably 60% finished when I stopped sewing entirely for a few months. And when I picked back up, I just, I just decided, okay, I'm gonna finish this bag and I kind of not rushed through it, but I just went for it. And the one thing I forgot is this has some Molly, or sorry, Powell's webbing on the front panel. And I was gonna put some on, I guess what is technically the bottom, so that I could have the option to attach a water bottle carrier for really long walk fishing uh, excursions. Uh, and I just forgot to do that. So I'll figure out another way to carry water with me if I need to. Um, it's not super critical, but so um, I guess let me show you how this works. So this is a sling bag, so a single strap. It's got an accessory stabilizer strap. So if I'm being chased by alligators, I can run and have it uh, be stable. And I've got, right now I've got my fishing pliers just mounted here. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them here all the time. Although I do like the fact that they're inverted, easy to use. I use these for trimming fishing line and pulling hooks out of fish. So that's nice. Uh, I made the Kydex sheath for it. I've done a couple of Kydex videos in the past and they don't really seem to hit well with my audience. But you, know, you can post a comment, let me know if it's something you're interested in and maybe we'll do a video at some point. But um, so that's here, but I can just take this off easily and put it on my belt if I prefer. So the idea is I'm, as I'm out fishing, this is here. And then if I need to change a lure, change a fly if I'm fly fishing, uh, or get any of the other tools that I have here, I can just spin this around and then I have this separated into two compartments. The front smaller compartment is where I keep my fly box and my other fly fishing accessories, so leaders and tippet and stuff. Um, that's all in there. And then the larger compartment, I have a tackle box thing, a little divided compartment to keep a bunch of lures. I tend to use a lot of the same general kind of lure for the fishing I do the most. I have another tackle box in my truck with a, more of a variety of stuff. This is just kind of my day-to-day -day stuff. But this has a pocket specifically for this divider. There's another pocket. Right now I've just got some of my fly fishing leaders in, um, but that's actually for uh, spools of leader for, for spinning fishing. Uh, I've got a first aid kit and a pair of these uh, pliers for, for holding fish by the lip that I don't want to stick my hand into their mouth because some fish you might not come back with all of your fingers. And that's basically what's in here. There's enough extra room I could stick a snack bar. I can't be too mad about that. My car's kind of loud too. Uh, <clears throat> There's enough extra room in here. I could put a snack or something if it was going to be that kind of a day. Uh, on the outside here, I have this little container. I need to tape this on or something to make sure it, it hasn't fallen off yet, but I'm afraid it's going to. This is a little container that's intended to hold small pieces of fishing line. Whenever I tie on a new lure or a new fly, there's the little tag in that you have to cut off and it's easily dropped and I don't want to litter. And I, I stuff it into my pockets and then it's coming out in the laundry and stuff. So I got this to just stick that into, and I have it here on this towels webbing. So ideally I pull out my stuff and change my lure, and then it's right there, and I'm done. Um, I also have a set of gloves on here. One of the fish that I tend to catch a lot is called an Oscar. Uh, it's a non-native species in Florida. Um, super fun to catch, they're really aggressive, but they're very, very slimy and have pretty, no, not pretty, very sharp uh, spines on their fins. So I usually put on gloves when I handle them. Uh, and as it turns out, 
when I'm wearing the pack, I can just reach back and pull these out. They're just in a shock cord with a, a cord lock on it. So I can grab them, put on the glove, handle the fish, and then you know, I'll have to put it back around if I want to put them back on. I often just keep these in a pants pocket when I know I'm catching Oscars, but sometimes they surprise me. So two details that some of you might find interesting. Well, maybe three details. The uh, front of the smaller pocket, the front panel is cork fabric. I've used this in a few applications now. It's on the front of my latest hip pack, waist pack, fanny pack, whatever we want to call it. And I also made a wallet out of this maybe a year ago now. And I use this every single day and I did that to see how it holds up. It's holding up great. So pretty, pretty neat stuff to work with. Uh, and then in here, there is a magnet and that is there so that I can take out the fly that I want to use next or, or if I have to change a, a hook on a spinning rod and I have a place to put it, you know, especially with the fly, the, the knot I use to tie the fly, uh, I have to kind of tie part of the knot and then run it through and then finish tying it. So it's nice to have a place I can just put it and not have to worry about dropping it. So, uh, and then the other fun part about this pack is I sewed uh, the outline of a peacock bass, another one of my favorite fish to catch here, uh, into the mesh on the, this is a spacer mesh or 3D mesh on the back panel. So I use the same mesh on the shoulder strap. The strap on the pack is basically just a backpack strap. It's got 1 8 inch EVA foam in the center, spacer mesh on the back, the fabric that the rest of the pack is made out of on the front, mil spec 17337 webbing, and it's bound with mil spec 4088 binding. Um, speaking of the main fabric, uh, I'll try to put something in text here. I don't remember off the top of my head. I bought this on clearance from Rocky Woods. Um, and it's a fabric I had not worked with before. It's kind of similar to say like 500D Cordura, but um, like I said, it was on clearance. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. You could make something like this out of 1000D Cordura, 500D Cordura, 400D pack cloth maybe. Um, any number of different uh, fabrics would be fine. This just, I happened to buy it because it was on clearance and it was cheap. So uh, zippers are number eight YKK continuous coil zippers and I don't think there's anything else terribly interesting to say about this pack other than uh, I'm really glad that I finally got inspired to finish it so I took it out to my favorite fishing area this past weekend and used it it's awesome I'm gonna just throw some footage of that fishing trip at the end of this video so if you hate fishing bye uh, and if you want to see you know why I made a pack like this then enjoy some footage of me fishing in the swamp and uh, maybe uh, having to argue with an alligator. So anyway, thanks for watching. If any of this outdoor stuff interests you, make sure you check the link in the description for my second channel, The Jason Wins. Poor mouth. Hey, buddy. I'm sorry. Okay. Little tiny warm mouth. Thank you, buddy. Don't tell your friends. Okay, that has got some fight to it. It feels like an Oscar. Yep. All right, buddy, you're lucky you're pretty small. Mm, not bad, but 
I'm looking for bigger than you to bring home. So. Uh, that was an Oscar. Oscar really? Yeah, they're uh, non-native species here. And yeah, there's quite a few of them. That's a warm mouth. You are a nice little warm mouth too, buddy. Have I caught you before? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's a chunky little warm mouth. Yeah, there must be a a spot they like back there because I've caught a lot of them back there. No, oh, are you okay? Did I? No. Okay. Thought I side hooked them or something. Okay. Little guy. Oh, <laughs> let me toss you that way. As you are being bad. I knew I was going to get a couple that size. I would probably keep you. Oh, hi, buddy. How are you? <laughs> Whoa, you're easy now. That wasn't an invitation. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll better back away because. That was a little aggressive. All right, well, I guess we're not gonna try for any more Oscars there. Oh, wow, that is a nice sunfish. Holy cow, that's the biggest sunfish I've ever caught. By a lot. That is a beauty. No gator. Okay, thanks buddy. Wow, I thought that was some Oscars over there, but maybe it's sunfish. Terrible cat. Doesn't seem to matter, but... Man. Oh, that's an Oscar. Okay. I thought it was a sunfish again for a second. Like, Holy cow. What are they feeding these things around here? A little one. Okay, I think I found the Oscars. Oh. Still a little borderline for me. I was thinking about bringing some home, but I really want a couple of really big ones. Okay. Oh man. God, these things fight so hard. 